In this episode, I use a laser pen. We talk formulas, and me and Lawrence have a lover's tiff. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Ask the LJs, episode 30. 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. 32. Boom. And I'm just going to take a snipe at you. Basically, we've got some slides on the television behind us to help us with um, answering this particular question. And Luke has our laser pointer clicker to click through the slides and he's really excited about it and blah blah blah. So question today comes from um, Fabio Banano. Fabio Banano. Fabio Banana. To go with the stress banana that we got. Fabio Banana. There we go. Um, he posted in our Facebook group um, basically asking um, which formulas people were using to work out basal metabolic rate total daily energy expenditure, uh, basically figuring out someone's calorie intake or kind of ideal calorie intake using a formula. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd take a crack at answering this one um, because it's a pretty good question um, and it's something that certainly I see people getting a bit confused about quite a lot. Especially with the macros and how many grams, how well, many calories per gram. Yeah, it's more the validity of the formulas themselves. Because there's loads out there. Yeah. So. Basically, what these formulas will do, they will take um, some form of weight measurement, mm -hmm. usually. Um, can either be someone's current weight, it can be someone's target, target body weight, it can be someone's fat-free mass, mm -hmm. um, something like that. Um, they will potentially take some other things into account. Some of the more complicated ones take things like height and age and gender into account as well. Some of the simpler ones don't quite so much. And they will basically do some sums. Occasionally you have to times them by like an activity factor as well to figure out um, how much activity someone's doing. And they will spit out an approximate number of calories that that person should be eating to um, maintain that body weight if they're using current body weight or to get down to a target body weight if they're using a target body weight. Mm -hmm. um, so... The first thing to say about these is that they, by and large, are guesstimates. Like, they are just stabs in the dark based on large samples of people that researchers have taken and basically formed what are called empirical equations from. So what they will do is they will have drawn extensive correlations between this group of people and their various... Um, actual calorie expenditures um, and then they will have come up with some sums that for that particular group of people will describe pretty well um, the relationship between these people's height, weight, age, gender and the calorie expenditures that they found. Um, so that's kind of the, that's the first hurdle that you come across when using one of these formulas is that you may not fit into that group of people very nicely. For example, I think some of the equations were derived from specific populations. I can't remember off the top of my head whether they were like normal mm -hmm. or whether they were like severely underweight or severely overweight people. You may not fit into those populations. So that's kind of the the first hurdle. And at the end of the day, when you what are some of the ones with the Mifflin and You've got the Mifflin Saint something. Gior? Jour? Saint Jour? I don't know. There's the Harris-Benedict formula. Um, Alan Aragon has a one that's quite popular. And he has kind of three variants of that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few other ones. Yeah, and when if you crunch the numbers and it was like mm -hmm. a normal average person, not like really low body weight or really high body weight, there's probably, if you look at like an average, maybe a 200, 300 calorie yeah. difference. And at the end of the day, you could be like trying to, like the fat-free mass ones and stuff like that. Mm. 
Well, then it means you have to accurately know your body fat percentage, which mm -hmm. people probably don't, especially guys. They tend to Under. say they're 10% when in actual fact they're probably 15%. Mm -hmm. um, so we just use a really simple one. I think I've got this from Joseph Agu because, again, you, you could really do a load of subs and stuff like that, but it just literally is 23 times their body weight in kilograms. And Eric Helms has one with 22 calories. So I'm not gonna like lose any sleep over it. If you're doing it in pounds, uh, you then all that by 2.2. Yeah, basically. So, so for the 22 calories per kilogram of body weight, it would be 10 pound, uh, 10 calories per pound of body weight. Or if you're using 23, 10 and a bit. In a bit. But <laughs> the, the thing what I want to emphasize is is that don't stress over it. Get like a baseline. This is the thing. What you said about the the variations between the the formulas that like I think I remember I think it was Army Leg yeah, had a really good it. article where he compared all of the different formulas. formulas. And I think there are about eight of them that he listed and like it spat out all the values for them. They're generally within like a three to four hundred calorie range. Yeah. That's probably about as much as someone's active like energy expenditure is gonna vary day to day over the course of a week anyway. Yeah. Like in if you take into account whether someone's training or not, how many steps they're doing that day um, whether they've had more caffeine than usual that day, so maybe a fidgeting a bit more. Um, there's always individual variants, yeah, there's, and there's always the variants based on the day of the week and things change. Yeah, like some so, days I might only walk 5,000 steps, other days it might be 20,000 steps. Mm, that's the thing. So don't stress about it. People's energy expenditure, excuse me, is going to vary a lot anyway. So there's no point trying to nail down the exact number of calories that someone is expending on any given day because that's never static. That's always moving. Just as someone's body weight is never completely static, there's always slight fluctuations in it. So there's no with, with these, you need to look at trends, upward trends and downward trends and changes over time and average changes over time as well. There's no point trying to get really, really anal about one day's worth of data look mm -hmm. at it over the much bigger picture so as luke said 22 to 23 calories per kilogram of body weight or 10 to 10 point Whatever. something pretty small um oh, I print oh, sorry our printer's making some noise What's uh, involved? <laughs> per pound of body weight is probably going to give you uh, once you times it by this is your uh, BMR. Fat. Yeah, this is your BMR. Or your so. RMR. Yeah. So BMR is basal metabolic rate. RMR is resting, resting metabolic rate. Roughly same sort of thing. Yeah, obviously we're not in a metabolic world where we literally no. all the things are controlled. In, and this, this is the amount metabolic. of calories that you're expending. Just at rest. It's pretty much if you were like comatose. Like, yeah, like laying down. Yeah. Twenty four hours. Not quite comatose. It's taking into account like your brain activity and stuff as well. Yeah. But if you were just completely sedentary, if you were lying in bed doing nothing, your eating body to nothing, tick over. Yeah. Is yeah. Is exactly. that like to think of a car? Yeah. The car's engine on how many? I hate how much petrol? Car to human analogies. Yeah. This one tends you, to work. And yes, the last episode you used a fish, which totally swam over my head. Oh. I was gonna say flume. You weren't a bird. <laughs> so yeah, fish. the twi so let's go twenty three uh, calories, calories per kilogram, kilogram body weight. Yeah. That gives you your RMR, mm -hmm. and then you would use an activity multiplier. And there's again many of them out there. We like one from Eric Helms. He presented it uh, two thousand and fourteen at Bath, and also on the SBS Academy. And he takes into account people which lift. So for a sedentary person. To very sedentary in their day to day stuff, but lifts three to six times per week. He uses a multiplier of 1.3 to 1.6. And if you're lightly active, so someone who again is up in the bat, but not probably someone who's doing maybe six, seven thousand steps a day, maybe a bit less. Again, these are very subjective to how you yeah, would see someone I'd, as. I'd probably go anywhere between the five to ten thousand steps a yeah. day. That's probably for most people like lightly active. It depends on how short your legs are, pretty yeah. much. And Helms use is for lightly active training three to six times per, per week, 1.5 to 1.8. If you're active and again, three to six lifting times per week, it goes with 1.7 to two. And then if you're very active, 1.9 to 2.2. So there's a variance between 1.3 and 2.2. What I'd say about this, 
just to interject quickly, is a lot of you might be thinking, well, how do I know which one? How do I know whether it's 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7 or 1.8 if I've got someone who is lightly active and lifts um, three to six days a week? So the thing to do with that is um, to not stress about it and give them a calorie range. Because again, as we said, calorie expenditure is never static. So it could be on any given day, it could be down at the 1.5 end, it could be up at the 1.8 end. So give them a range of calories, especially if you're looking to just maintain their body weight. Um, I won't, I disagree. Do you? Yes. Okay. Because these formulas are just formulas, they're just guesstimates as you said. Yeah. But if what we're looking at is we want to take a daily weight in, Mm -hmm. So rather than going right 2,500 calories now and giving them a range, we want to be basically just consistent 2,500 calories for example and then we know exactly over the week that's that many calories and then we can see what their body weight is doing. You can still average out. Because then you're, you're if averaging they're out. If they're tracking the calories. They're averaging still... out but then it's that is being, if we're saying not to be too anal, that is being too anal in my opinion giving what? them giving a, a range. range. Because their range from, say like they're having 2,500 calories to 2,000 Especially if they're new as well to tracking. You just basically want to say, right, so I have 2,500 calories a day, and we're just going to look at a weekly average over two weeks, say, and then I'd make say them. that if they're new to tracking, giving them a slight range is probably easier. Why? Because they're not stressing about having to hit a particular but number. But well, yeah, but they could. But then what we want is very consistent, don't we, with. If someone's them new tracking, to tracking are they going to be consistent anyway? Well, if we only have to hit 2,500 calories. <laughs> You could take either approach. So you're, you're, saying, no. you're saying a range, but you're, you're not saying you can... Generally, that range, having done the calculations on these things and given people... I suppose range, you could have a range. A, I just it's, was within thinking, a, it's within a couple of hundred calories. Anyway. I was just thinking with the guys having um, certain days at this calories and certain days at that way calories, but you meant like a range overall. Yeah, I mean, if, some, if you say to someone, for these next two weeks, while we... And then you can just total up the calories yeah, and then... While we nail down average. your maintenance, if you eat, for example, we've got a... I thought you meant like workout day, rest day. Oh, no, 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 not just at all. Just a range. No, cool. just, a, just a range that you should be eating roughly between on any given day. Um, so to that end, you're not having to then decide. Getting it to the T. Yeah, and having it to the exact And then you could just, if it's 14 day. days, you just add them all up and then divide it by 14. Yeah, average it out, then you figure out their average. And then what Helms day. does, which yeah. Judge will explain. So then what Helms does is actually uses the... Um, 3,500 calorie per pound rule. Now, I won't go into all the... You've got an article on there. Uh, we, we, we actually have an article on sbs.showbyscience.com um, called Can You I think it's Can you Gain Weight in a Calorie Deficit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Helms and I wrote it together and we, we kind of, we touch on some of the issues and some of the um, benefits of the 3,500 calorie per pound rule. But for those of you who don't know what it is, this basically states that if you take um, one pound of fat, it contains approximately 3,500 calories of energy. And I believe it's 3,500 calories of metabolizable energy. But I could be wrong. Either way. Um, and this rule states pretty much that if you uh, are in a 3,500 calorie deficit over the course of any period of time, really, mm -hmm. but for most people, most people say it's a week, um, then you will lose one pound of weight for the most part. Like it's a very much a rule of thumb. In some instances it works pretty well. Um, for example, if someone is relatively lean, mm -hmm. um, weight training and has been weight training consistently, um, is tracking their calories pretty well, etc. It, it can work pretty well for that. If someone isn't, there can be some some interesting goings on that really don't make the 3,500 calorie per pound rule valid. But he uses this when working out someone's approximate maintenance calories. Um, and it's a pretty easy way of doing it. He basically, over the course of a week, the 3,500 calorie per pound rule equates to 500 calories per day. You take a 500 calorie deficit, you multiply it by seven for seven days in the week, you get 3,500 calories over the course of the week. That's going to lead to one pound of fat loss. He doubles that. So basically he says that a 1,000 calorie deficit per day is going to lead to approximately one kilo of fat loss because one kilo is 
roughly two pounds, 2.2 pounds, 2.20 something or other. Um, so he says thousand calories a day, one kilo of fat loss a week. What you can then do with someone is if they've been tracking their um, calories and their weight for about two weeks, um, you can, or even a week, we mm -hmm. could probably do it. You can say, right, well, you lost 0 0.2 kilos this week. That means you were in each day in a 200 calorie deficit. Um, so it's basically 100 calories per 100 grams lost. Mm -hmm. So from there, you can work, you can basically say, right, your maintenance is 200 calories higher than your average calorie intake this week. So yeah. it's again. 0 0.1, it'd be 100 calories, but it's 0 0.3 lost, then it'd be 300 calories below a daily target of whatever it is. This confused me a little bit the first time I read it um, on the slides. So if you are having any difficulties with like figuring this out in your head, shoot us a message on Facebook or drop us an email or something and I will try and explain it a little bit better than I've currently done. So just to wrap it up, don't be too anal over what thing you use. We use 23 times their body weight in kilograms, then a multiplier between 1.3 to say 2.2, .2, being sedentary, hardly lifting to very active, lifting a lot. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that, get them to, once you've got that target, get them to track. When they're tracking, if their body weight's dropping, if it's say 0.1, an average drop, they're probably, you could say a ballpark figure, 100 calories lower than their maintenance. And then probably the same if it's 0.1 above, then they may be like 100 calories excess mm -hmm. per day yeah. uh, than their maintenance. So there you go, guys. We'll see you next time where we will be discussing the screening process for online clients.